reading through the Bible in a year, April 21st, Leviticus 25, Psalm 32, Ecclesiastes 8, and 2 Timothy chapter 4. Yahweh spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land that I give you, the land shall keep a Sabbath to Yahweh. For six years you shall sow your field, and for six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather in its fruit. But in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath to Yahweh. You shall not sow your field or prune your vineyard. You shall not reap what grows of itself in your harvest or gather the grapes of your undressed vine. It shall be a year of solemn rest for the land. The Sabbath of the land shall provide for you, for yourself and for your male and female slaves, and for all your hired workers and the sojourner who lives with you, and for your cattle and for the wild animals that are in your land. All its yield shall be for food. Then you shall count seven weeks of years, seven times seven years, so that the time of the seven weeks of seven years shall give you forty-nine years. It's called math. Then you shall sound the loud trumpet on the tenth day of the seventh month. On the day of atonement, Yom Kippur, you shall sound the trumpet throughout your land, and you shall consecrate the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you, when each of you shall return to his property, and each of you shall return to his clan. That that, that Basically, it's a release of um, all of the lands that we're going to get to this in a minute, but just as a as a synopsis for you, it's a release of all the lands that were sold in order to pay debts. It's a release of all debts, and also... It is a release of all people who are living as slaves. You want to go back and work as a slave under the same person again? Sweet, you can do that. But this is the year of release for you. And it comes every uh, 50 years. Let's continue on. Verse 11. Yet, rather, that 50th year shall be a jubilee for you. In it you shall neither sow nor reap what grows of itself, nor gather the grapes from the undressed vines. For it is a jubilee, it shall be holy to you. You may eat the produce of the field. In this year of jubilee, each of you shall return to his property. And and if you shall make a sale to your neighbor or buy from your neighbor, you shall not wrong one another. You shall pay your neighbor according to the number of years after the jubilee. He shall sell to you according to the number of years of crops. If the years are many, well, you shall increase the price. If the years are are few, you shall reduce the price. For it is the number of crops that he is uh, selling to you. You shall not wrong one another, but you shall fear your God, for I am Yahweh your God. Therefore, you shall do all my statutes and keep my rules and perform them. And then you shall dwell in the land securely. The land will yield its fruit, and you will eat your fill and dwell in it securely. And if you say, what shall we eat in the seventh year? If we may not sow or gather in our crop, I will command my blessing to you on the sixth year, so that it will produce a crop sufficient for three years. When you sow in the eighth year, you'll be eating some of the old crop, And you shall eat the old until the ninth year, when its crop arrives. The land shall not be sold in perpetuity, for the land is mine. We're just basically allowed to use it. For you are strangers and sojourners with me. In all the country you possess, you shall allow a redemption of the land. If your brother becomes poor and sells part of his property, then his nearest redeemer shall come and redeem what his brother has sold. If a man has no one to redeem it, then himself, uh, rather, and then himself becomes uh, prosperous and finds sufficient means to redeem it, well, let him calculate the years since he sold it and pay back the balance to the man to whom he sold it, and then return to his property. But if he does not have sufficient means to recover it, then what he sold shall remain in the hand of the buyer until the year of jubilee, and the jubilee it shall be released. And he shall return to his property. 
If a man sells a dwelling house in a walled city, he may redeem it within a year of its sale. For a full year he shall have the right of redemption. If it is not redeemed within a full year, then the house in the walled city shall belong in perpetuity to the buyer. Throughout his generations it shall not be released in the jubilee. Why? These are not the lands that are given out as part of um, uh, as part of the inheritance. Continuing on, but the houses of the villages that have no wall around them, so it's not a, a like like it's not an actual city, um, shall be classified with the fields of the land. They may be redeemed, and they shall be released in the jubilee. As for the cities of the Levites, well, the Levites may redeem at any time the houses and the cities that they possess. And if one of the Levites exercises his right of redemption, then the house that was sold in a city they possess uh, shall be released in the Jubilee. For the houses in the cities of the Levites are their possession among the people of Israel. But the fields of pasture lands belonging to their cities may not be sold, for that is their possession forever. If your brother becomes poor and cannot maintain himself uh, with you, you shall support him as though he were a stranger and a sojourner, and he shall live with you. Take no interest from him or profit, but fear your God that your brother may live beside you. Um, he could pay his own way. He could pay um, his, his portion for the land or for other things, but you're not supposed to do it for the purpose of making money off of him. Continuing on, you shall not lend him your money at interest, nor give him your food for profit. For I am Yahweh your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, to give you the land of Canaan, and to be your God. If your brother becomes poor beside you, and sells himself to you, you shall not make him serve as a slave. He shall be with you as a hired worker, and as a sojourner. He shall serve you until the year of Jubilee. Then he shall go out from you he and his children with him, and go back to his own clan and return to the possession of his fathers. For they are my servants whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as slaves. You shall not rule over him ruthlessly, but shall fear your God. As for your male and female slaves whom you may have, you may buy, and, uh, rather, you may buy male and female slaves from among the nations that are around you, you may also buy from among the strangers who sojourn with you and their clans that are with you, who have been born in your land, and they may be your property. You may bequeath to them, rather, may bequeath them to your sons after you to inherit as possessions forever. You may make slaves of them, but over your brothers, the people of Israel, you shall not rule uh, one over another ruthlessly. If a stranger or sojourner with you becomes rich and your brother beside him becomes poor and sells himself to the stranger or sojourner with you or to a member of the stranger's clan, then after he is sold, he may be redeemed. One of his brothers may redeem him or his uncle or his cousin may redeem him. This is the kinsman redeemer. Uh, or a close relative from his clan may redeem him. Or if he grows rich, he may redeem himself. He shall calculate with his buyer from the year when he sold himself until the year of Jubilee, and the price of his sale shall vary with the number of years. The time he was with his owner shall be rated as the time of a hired worker. If there are still many years left, well, he shall pay proportionally for his redemption, rather for his redemption, some of his sale price. If there remain but a few years until the Jubilee, but he shall calculate and pay his redemption in proportion to his years of service. He shall treat him as a, uh, as a worker hired year by year. He shall not rule ruthlessly over him in your sight. And if he is not redeemed by these means, then he and his children with him shall be released in the year of Jubilee. For it is to me that the people of Israel are servants. They are my servants, my slaves, whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh, or God. Let's move on now to Psalm 32. Blessed is the one whose transgression, whose sins are forgiven, whose sin is covered, Blessed is the man against whom Yahweh counts no iniquity, 
and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to Yahweh, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely, in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from uh, from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but the steadfast love, rather, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in Yahweh. Be glad in Yahweh and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. The preacher continues, Who is like the wise, and who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom makes his face shine, and the hardness of his face is changed. I say, keep the king's command, because of God's oath to him. Be not hasty to go from his presence. Do not take your stand in an evil cause, for he does whatever he pleases. For the word of the king is supreme, and who may say to him, what are you doing? Whoever keeps a command will know no evil thing, and the wise heart will know the proper time and the just way. For there is a time and a way for everything, although man's trouble lies heavy on him. For he does not know what is to be, for who can tell him how it will be? No man has power to retain the spirit or power over the day of death. There is no discharge from war. Nor will wickedness deliver those who are, uh, or rather, who are given to it. All this I observe while applying my heart to all that is done under the sun, when man had power over man to his hurt. Then I saw the wicked buried. They used to go up and out of the holy place and were praised in the city where they had done so, uh, rather, where they had done such things. This also is futility, it's vanity. Because the sentence against an evil deed is not executed speedily. The heart of the children of man is fully set to do evil. Though a sinner does evil a hundred times and prolongs his life, yet I know that it will be uh, well with those who fear God, because they fear before him. But it will not be well with the wicked. Neither will he prolong his days like a shadow, because he does not fear before God. There is a a vanity that takes place on earth that are, rather, that there are righteous people to whom it happens according to the deeds of the wicked, and there are wicked people to whom it happens according to the deeds of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity, and I commend joy, for man has nothing better under the sun but to eat and drink and be joyful. For this will go well, rather, this will go with him in his toil through the days of his life that God has given him under the sun. When I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the busyness that is done on earth, how neither day nor night do one's eyes see sleep, then all rather than I saw all the work of God, that man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. However, Much man may toil in seeking, he will not find it out. Even though a wise man claims to know, he cannot find it out. Now let's conclude today in 2 Timothy chapter 4.
Paul continues, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work as of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon. For Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, and Titus to Dalmatia. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me for ministry. Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left at Carpus, uh, with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all, the parchments. Aleander, the coppersmith, did me great harm. We read about this before in... Um, Uh, 1 Timothy one twenty, and also, um, that was referred to in Acts. Anyway, uh, the Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Beware of him yourself, for he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. That may have been an actual thing that occurred, um, not, a, um, not a euphemism for something. Back to verse 18. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet Prisca and Aquila and the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus remained at Corinth, and I left Trophimus, who was ill at Miletus. Do your best to come before winter. Eubulus sends greetings to you, as do Pudens and Linus and Claudia and all the brothers. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you. That's it for today. That is all the reading and all of the notes. God willing, We'll be back tomorrow. Behold the word of the Lord.